Let's continue to factor some trinomials where uh, the coefficient in front of the squared term is not a 1. I'm going to continue with the process that is a guaranteed process every time, but I do need you to know but that personally, because this is a 3, I might guess first myself. So any of you who want to guess, um, I would put a 3n and an n here for this 3n squared because that's a prime number. What would I guess for product is 20? Personally, I'd probably guess a 5 and a 4, and my eyeballs can see this 4 in the middle and this 15 on the outside, and 4 and 15 combines to be 19, and my eyeballs would allow me to put the negative signs there because I want it to add to be a negative 19, but I want the product to be a positive 20. This is hard for some people to guess and check. So if that's hard for you, you are looking for two numbers whose product is 60, a positive 60. So their signs have to be the same, but they have to add to be a negative 19. So can I come up with those on my own? Um, so again, signs have to be the same. If I were going to do this myself, I would go negative 1 times a negative 60. Then I'd say 2 goes into 60 30 times. Then I would say 3 goes into 60 20 times. Then I would say 4 goes into 60 15 times. I would say 5 goes into 60 12 times. And 6 goes into 60 10 times. I'd probably run out of options. Now, don't forget, I could go here and take uh, 60 divided by x, and I would start my table at 0 and go in increments of 1. And then I would see the 1 times 60, and the 2 times 30, and the 3 times 20, and the 4 times 15, and the 5 times 12, and the 6 times 10. I would put my own signs on it. I see that this is the pairing that I need, the negative 4 and the negative 15. So I'm going to replace a minus 19 with a negative 4n and a minus 15n because that is a minus 19. I'll bring down the 20, I'll bring down the 3n squared, and I'll group the first two. Careful that negative sign, I'll group the last two. The only thing that comes out of these two is an n. And I'll need a 3n minus 4 here. But the thing that comes out of these two is a 5, and I'm going to factor out a minus 5, because then I can have a positive 3n here to match this, and a minus 4 here to match this, because minus times a minus is this plus. These do match. I get to put down my 3n minus 4, and then my n minus 5 in my other binomial. I can uh, foil it in order to check it. I had already found out my answer and I know I'm good. So what two numbers multiply to be a negative 72, I think that is? Product is a negative 72 and the coefficient in front of the middle term, I want them to add to be a positive 1. Oh man, I happen to know that 9 times 8 is 72. So I'm, I'm not going to bother with my calculator. Uh, but again, I could. I just go, you know, y equals, I would probably put a negative 72 divided by x when that's negative. So that it will come up with one positive and one negative. And if I go down here a little ways, I should get to the 8 times 9 or it could be a negative 8 times a positive 9. Um, let's see, I want it to add to be a positive 1, so I better make the 9 positive and the 8 negative, because 9 and a negative 8 add to be 1. When I come over here, though, I'm probably going to put the minus 8 t squared first and then the 9 t squared. Again, those have to add up to be a 1 t squared, and they do. So make sure you get the t squared part and then bring down the 6t to the 4th. I did this because I wanted my minus sign in front of the second term instead of in front of the third term. So my greatest common factor here is a 2 and a t squared. So I'll need a 3t squared, be careful, and a minus 4. My greatest common factor here is a 3. And when I take that out, I'll need a 3t squared and a minus 4 here. Oh, good. 
those match. That's the if they don't match, you got a problem. And then 2t squared plus 3 goes in the other parentheses. This is not the difference of squares because this is not a 9. You got to be able to take the square root of it for it to be the difference of squares and factor it again. We'll just I'm not sure that I'm going to do all of these. Let's see how many I've got left. I'm going to I'm going to grab one more, I think. So, hmm. I'm looking to see if there's any ones with greater. Let's go to this one. So let's find two numbers whose product is a negative 120. And I want them to add to be 7. Oh, man. So I'm going to grab my calculator. So a negative 120 divided by x. And then, you know, I'm going to start my table because it's probably not 1 times 120 or 2 times 60. I I'm going to start my table at 3 and go in increments of 1. And so 3 times 40, 4 times 30, 5 times 24, 6 times 20, 8 times 15, 8 times a negative 15. Could those add to be 7 somehow? So I'm going to write those two, 8 and 15. So it could be a negative 8 and a positive 15 or a positive 8 and a negative 15. I believe it's this negative 8 and a positive 15 that will add to be 7. So right here, I'm going to write this as a negative 8pq plus 15pq. I'm going to erase this to give myself some room. Then bring down the minus 12q squared, bring down the 10 p squared and group the first two and group the last two. The greatest common factor here is a 2 and a p, I believe. So I'll need a 5p here so that that product is 10p squared. I'll need a minus 4q here so that that product is a minus 8pq. The greatest common factor here is a 3 and a q. So I'm going to factor out a 3q and hope that my first term is this 5p so that that product is a 15pq. And then I'll need a minus 4q here. So 3q times a minus 4q is a minus 12q squared. Oh good, those match. So I write that down once when I factor by grouping. And then the 2p and the 3q get written down in the other parentheses and don't forget to check it. Okay, let's do one, I believe just maybe one or two more. It happens that these are four terms. So these are not um, set up to be trinomials that are factored by grouping, but you know, should I group these two and these two? Nah, because the greatest common factor here is x. And that's the difference of squares. I don't think that's going to work. It happens that sometimes in the very difficult problems that you might have to find a trinomial that factors. This trinomial is called a perfect square trinomial. When you can take the square root of that number, square root of 9 is 3, and double that number and get either a 6 or a negative 6, then this is called a perfect square trinomial. It can be factored into the product of two binomials that are identical. An x in the front of each of these because x times x is x squared. And you are now looking for two numbers whose product is 9. This is an easy one. It's got a 1 in front of the squared term. And sum is a negative 6. And uh, so product is 9 would be a negative 3 times a negative 3. And a negative 3 and a negative 3 adds to be a negative 6. So I could write this as a minus 3 and a minus 3, but I need a y in the back of each of these because a minus 3y times a minus 3y is a positive 9y squared. My smiles would total to be a minus 6xy. So I'm just checking this. This is an easy one. I don't need to go through all that work because of the 1 in front of the squared term. And so finally, I could call this x minus 3y, that quantity squared. And then I'm going to subtract a perfect square. This is the difference of squares in a very hard problem. 
So the first uh, grouping symbol, because of this binomial squared, will have an x minus 3y in the front of each of these groups. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'll have a plus 2z in one of these, a minus 2z in the other of these, and I'm done. These parentheses were not necessary, so I have x minus 3y plus 2z, and x minus 3y minus 2z, and if you multiplied these all out, you'd get that, that group right there. It happens now that in this one, this is the perfect square trinomial. It factors into s times s is s squared, and a minus t times a minus t would, uh, you know what, I must have the wrong group. Um, let me just, because uh, that would be a uh, positive t squared, so that's not going to work. Um, so I was wrong, and the so that I can tell that that's not going to work. So all of a sudden I'm going, ah, I wonder if the r squared, the s squared, and the st are my group. And if so, I'm going to put the 2 st here and the minus s squared here. Man, and that's not going to work either. I'm kind of starting to second guess myself here about this. Geez, I paused to redo this and I realized that what's going to have to happen in this problem is in order to preserve uh, an r squared and then a difference of squares, I'm going to group this, and I made a mistake a minute ago, so this um, the minus sign I want to preserve here is going to let me have an s squared right here, but I'm going to need a minus 2st right there so that this minus times this minus will be a plus, and then I'm going to need a plus t squared right here, and now I'm good. So this trinomial is going to factor into s and s up here for s squared, and a minus t and a minus t for this positive t squared, and this smile is a minus 1st, and this smile is another minus 1st for a total of a minus 2st, and then finally, this binomial being alike is going to be written as s minus t, that quantity squared, with an r squared in front, and now I have the difference of squares. So I'm going to factor that into a big group, an r in the front of each of these, a plus sign in one, a minus sign in the other because of the difference of squares, and then at the back of each of these, the s minus t times the s minus t is the s minus t squared. As this one goes, the plus sign means I can just drop those parentheses. As this one goes, this minus sign means the s has got to become a minus s, and this minus t has got to become a plus t, and I'm all done. We're going to leave um, the rest of this go, and all I'd like to ask of you is if you would pause, and now on page 92, would you solve the riddle that says, what do you call drawing squares on Dracula. So this is the Dracula riddle, and it is all problems where there's a number in front of the squared term, like a 2 and a 6 and a 12, and then a middle term and then a constant.